and that transport is available to a referral facility for obstetric care in case of emergency. As a result, the maternal mortality ratio continues to witness a sharp decline. Part of our work that has been delegated to us is the implementation of the Food Act. Um, we are not implementing the Food Act, but we try to coordinate all the sectors that are involved in the implementation of the Food Act. And there are structures that are built around to facilitate the implementation. And one of those structures that has been established under the Food Act is the National Forest Committee. And they have been doing quite a lot of work. They have been developing a strategic plan to make sure that food that we eat in the Gambia and food that we export out of the Gambia is of standard. <laughs> The Gambia has a nutrition policy aimed at attaining the nutritional requirements of the population with emphasis on women and children. At first, nutrition was a health issue only. It was based at the Department of State for Health. But government decided that nutrition is beyond health. But nutrition is indeed a development issue. And it's cross-cutting. It's multi-sectoral. Therefore, it requires the, the, to be placed, at least, under the auspices of a high office that coordinates all the other sectors to which those sectors would respond. A national codex committee comprising government and non-governmental organizations is concerned with food production, quality, safety and trade. Through institutional interventions of the National Nutrition Agency, active mechanisms have been put in place to minimize micronutrient deficiencies with the promotion of exclusive breastfeeding, food fortification, and salt iodization. The agency coordinates the protection, promotion, and support of optimal infant and young child feeding practices, mainstreaming nutrition into many sectoral policies. No nation can attain its development aspirations without an objective and integrated population program. For the past three decades, we have achieved a lot. The Gambia government was able to improve the quality of sanitation, nutrition, and, and health. As a result of which, uh, the infant mortality rate, which is one of the key uh, indicative figures for development, has declined from 84,000 to 75,000. Maternal mortality has also declined from 1,050 uh, 1, to 730 in recent past. And there are all indications that uh, maternal mortality is on the decline. The Gambia's population program comprises a national commission with a secretariat at its operational arm. The program has been undertaking effective population research, analysis and dissemination with an advocacy component that targets government, civil society and the larger population. A lot is happening also in population. As you know, reproductive health is of concern, particularly maternal mortality, uh, child mortality, infant mortality and, and generally uh, development. Because it really, uh, population is about people's development. It's about human development in general. With a combination of strategies and activities, the Gambia's population growth rate has been stabilized with a remarkable increase in life expectancy, particularly for women. In third world countries, women and human rights is a pertinent issue that has attracted the attention of stakeholders in gender. The Gambia has adequate legal and institutional instruments to safeguard, protect, and promote women's rights. The African Charter on Human and People's Rights on the Rights of Women in Africa was in 2006 ratified by the National Assembly without reservation. The same year, the Gambia's National Assembly also ratified the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women. A year later, a women's bill was drafted through a highly consultative and participatory process 
in an attempt to domesticate regional and international human rights conventions. <laughs> The Gambia government is fully committed to enforcing laws protecting women's rights with the active involvement of traditional institutions in the fight against all forms of violence. As one of the most peaceful countries on the face of the earth, the Gambia cherishes peace and tranquility and maintains missions in trouble spots around the world. Both at home and in international missions, female officers participate actively in incorporating a gender perspective in the country's security forces. In governance, the Gambia's top leadership provides unprecedented opportunities for women's participation through affirmative action. I find the women in this country more honest, more responsible in terms of taking care of their families. The nation's second and third most important positions of Vice President and Speaker of the National Assembly are occupied by women. I'm the third speaker in Sussection who is a woman, which it actually shows that, um, that is a, a, there is continuity in the empowerment um, structure of women. And we go and um, if we take a look at um, the second highest position in the country, the vice president, um, that also is a woman and who has been there for over 10 years, 12 years, I believe. I mean, this is one woman vice president in Africa. This is extraordinary. She has been showing leadership in so many areas. This is not the first time we see her. We know that she is in the AU meetings, the summits, and the interventions she makes. We know that the Gambia is the place. In the judiciary, a significant number of lawyers, magistrates, and judges are women. In local government, the law provides for equal male and female representation in village and ward development committees. What at the level of policy making, uh, decision making rather, women are being empowered. You look at, at the decentralized level. Even look at the area council. How many women area councils do we have now? We never used to have them in the past. Today, as I'm talking to you, there are so many. I know that there are 15 that are elected. The on, what about the nominated ones? When you put that together, that's a big figure. How many female alcoholics do we have now? Village heads. We never used to have them in the past. 75% of women who contested the last local government elections won their seats through the material and moral support of their parties and the electorate. <laughs> We, the Gambian women, would always be behind us because we know where we were, in other words, where we came from and where we are now and what vision he has for us in the future. We know it. So we thank him for that. And we'll always be behind him because we know he has the interest of this country. That public confidence in Gambian women continues to fuel their positive drive in gainful industry and active participation in national development. If I find women more responsive to national development, I will give more sensitive responsibility to the women. Because all what I'm doing is I'm a, a nation builder and I'm looking for partners, Gambians, to help me be, fulfill my promise. I'm not doing anything extraordinary. I'm not doing it for politics. I said earlier on that the fishing industry, you go to the fishing area, the only Gambians who find there would be women. You go to agriculture. The women in this country work 12 months of the year. I'm not going to be able to do it.